Number 95. The reaction of WCl6 with aluminum at roughly around 400 degrees Celsius gives black crystals of a compound containing only tungsten and chlorine. A sample of this compound, when reduced with hydrogen, gives 0.2232 grams of the tungsten metal and hydrogen chloride, which is absorbed in water. Titration of the hydrochloric acid, thus produced, requires 46.2 mils of a 0.1051 molar NaOH to reach the endpoint. What is the empirical formula of the black tungsten chloride? Great question. <laughs> So glad you asked. Let's do it. There's a lot of stuff here, all right? But we just got to, you know, break it down into its little parts and just put the pieces together. Now, the whole the whole bigger picture, if we're looking at it, it says, what's the empirical formula of the black tungsten chloride? This is the compound that we're looking for. Now, they stated that this tungsten chloride came from the reaction of WCl6, right? But this this compound gave, you know, a compound that, that created only tungsten and chlorine. Now, if we look on our periodic table and we try to find where tungsten is, it might take us a little bit, but it is the W, okay? And the W is has an atomic number of 74. It's in D block. So we're looking for a compound that has tungsten, which is W, and chlorine, right? Now, do we know how many tungsten are in our compound? No. So I'm just going to say X for now. I don't know how many. And do I know how many chlorines are in my compound? No. So I'm just going to say Y. I'm going to keep that aside. Just, you know, just thinking about it, that I just need to find the W and the CL. Now the next sentence, they said that, you know, a sample of this compound, when it was reduced with hydrogen, gives... 0.2232 grams of the tungsten metal. Now remember guys, law of conservation of mass says that whatever mass that you get of a certain metal or an element in the product side has to be the same number that you started with of that compound. So if you gave rise to 0.2232 grams of the tungsten metal, that means that all of this had to be in the tungsten in this compound. So I might not know what the empirical formula is or what the subscript is, but I do know that I have 0 0.2232 grams of it. Now we've done tons of empirical formulas before in which we have a flow diagram, which you'll probably see in, in a couple of minutes, but the flow diagram does have grams of the individual components. So probably, all we would have to find out is how many grams of the chlorine is in this compound, and then we could take everything from there. But how do we get those grams of chlorine? Well, let's keep reading on. They said that they titrated this hydrochloric acid, right? And this produced 46.2 mils of 0 0.1051 molarity NaOH to reach the endpoint. Now, the end point of a titration, you've probably seen this if you did a lab experiment on titration. The end point is always when the color of the solution changes. So usually you'll see it turn like a purple color or a pink color. If you use, uh, I think it's like, usually you guys use like acetate, acetic acid and sodium hydroxide. But anyway, when the color changes, that's when you reach the end point. And at the end point, we will say that the moles of the NaOH have to equal the stoichiometric ratio of the acid that we're using. So basically, these two are going to come into contact with each other, right? They're titrating. It's an acid-base reaction. That's what a titration is. So keep in mind that the HCl, that's hydrochloric acid, plus NaOH which is this, they're titrating together, they're going to form a salt and water, right? That's NaCl plus H2O. Now this is the tricky part, guys, because they technically could have given you any acid, right? And by giving you any acid, it would change the stoichiometric ratio. 
But in this case, this is already balanced. Everything is a one to one to one to one ratio. So I don't have to add any coefficients in here. So now let's see. If I want to get the grams of chlorine, right, maybe from the information that they gave us, I can kind of go to the hydrochloric acid because this law of conservation of mass says that whatever was in this chlorine is going to be in the chlorine of the tungsten. So let's just write down, whoop, let's just write down what they gave me, right? So they gave me, let's see, 46. 0.2 mils of a 0 0.1051 molar NaOH solution. And in order to find out the, basically, the grams of the chlorine, the first thing I have to figure out is the moles of the chlorine. So first, let's just find the moles of the HCl, right? Now, in this case, we have to do molarity equals moles over liters to find out the moles of NaOH, right? They gave me a molarity, they gave me a volume. I know the formula, molarity equals moles over liters, right? I wanna solve for this, and I know the molarity and the volume. So I can just rearrange this and say that moles are gonna equal molarity times liters. First thing at first, I have to convert this milliliter into liters. We always do that by dividing by a thousand. So this would be the same thing as 0 0.0462. Now I'm going to use that and find out how many moles of NaOH I have. So mole equals the molarity 0 0.1051 times 0 0.0462. And let's just see how many moles I have. 0 0.1051 times 0 0.0462. I get 0 0.004856, and that's how many moles of the NaOH. So maybe I'll just write that down here. 0 0.004856 moles. Okay. Now, using our balanced equation and using our ratios, I just want to go from moles of NaOH to moles of HCl. Now, maybe if I can just kind of clean this up because there's going to be a lot of work here, I'm going to get rid of this. So if you need this, the molarity and the, and the mole, you know, pause the video, write it down. It's going bye-bye. So bye-bye to that. I don't need these anymore, so I'm getting rid of these. The only thing I really need is the mole value. We already worked with the other things, so I don't need it anymore. Now we're going to use our lovely... Uh, stoichiometric balancing, you know, the ratio guide to help us, right? It's this guy. We've seen this time and time again. The whole idea here is that we're now starting with 0 0.004856 moles. So technically, I can get rid of all this. Goodbye. I'm just starting with moles of not A, but of NaOH. right? And now I just want to kind of keep isolating until I get the chlorine. Now in this case, I'll go to moles of the other compound, which is HCl, because that's where the chlorine is. But then from there, I have to basically go to chlorine, right? So maybe from there, I'm just going to tweak this a little bit. From there, I can go to moles of just Cl. Okay, now we're ready to rock and roll. Let's start. 0 0.004856, and that's moles of NaOH. Times by ratio, you don't want that anymore. That goes on the bottom. So mole of NaOH on the bottom. Just look over to see what we're going. We're, we're going to moles of HCl already, right? And in this case, 
It's a multimole relationship of the same compound, of different compounds, sorry, excuse me. That's always the balance equation. Use those coefficients, but it's a one to one relationship. So for every one HCl, there's one NaOH. It's a one to one. And now, just to kind of show you the me like, you know, the actual correct way of doing it and show you how you get all of this stuff, let's just go to moles of Cl, because remember, law of conservation of mass, all the chlorine that I have is going to be the chlorine here. So mole of HCl on the bottom, mole of Cl on the top. Now, this type of rate... Uh, relationship where it's a mole to mole relationship of basically a compound and its individual element, we are not going to be using the balanced equation. We're going to be looking at the compound as a whole. Now you kind of start thinking to yourself, you say, okay, if I have one whole compound, how many CLs are there in the compound? There's only one chlorine in the one whole compound. So for every one whole HCl, I only see one Cl, so the one would go with the Cl. And now, even though this was a little tedious, I just wanted to, to show you how to actually break it down, it would be the same number. 4856 moles of Cl. Okay. Now, we can find the grams of Cl, but when we want to find an empirical formula, one of the steps is going from grams to moles. So if I already have the moles of the chlorine component, I don't really have to go back to grams and then go back to moles. You can, if you want to, that's fine. But just for simplicity of this uh, video, I'm just going to say that I'm just going to take it from here, okay? So now let's kind of, let's kind of, uh, let's kind of get get it ready for the next step. So I'm just going to bring this down, right? And I'm going to say that this is 0 0.004856 moles of Cl. Now I'm going to get rid of this. So pause the video if you need to. And I just want to make sure that the number is correct, 0 0.004856. Okay, so bye-bye. And now... If we have moles of the chlorine, I need to match it with moles of the tungsten, right? So all I have to do is just find out how to go from grams of tungsten to moles of tungsten, but we know that, right? We've done that time and time again. So all you have to do, or maybe I won't put a slash here, I'll say this is equal to, right? It's basically the same thing, but just a different unit. So remember, 0 0.2232 grams of the tungsten times by the ratio grams of the tungsten go on the bottom, mole of the tungsten go up on top. And remember, it's always one mole of the tungsten equals the molar mass of tungsten. So that's 183.8. And that cancels. So let's just see how many moles we got here. 0.2232 divided by 183.8. And I get 0 0.00121, we'll say 1214. And that's moles of the tungsten. Okay. So I'm just going to put that over here. 0 0.001214. Oops. 0 0.001214 mole of the tungsten. Okay. Pause the video if you need to. Getting rid of it. Bye-bye. All right. Clean slate. Now, how do we go from these moles to empirical formula? Well, remember, let's list it out. 0 .0012, uh, 0 0.001214 moles of tungsten. And then we have 0 0.004856 moles of the Cl. Now, if we want to find out an empirical formula, remember we need the most simplified mole ratio 
between the two different elements, so between the tungsten and the chlorine. So think about it, think about that same type of topic, right? That it's the smallest amount, it's the lowest number of coefficients. So basically when you have the moles, all you have to do is analyze these two numbers and divide each one by the smaller amount. 0.001214 is smaller than 0.004856. So I'm going to divide each one by 0 0.001214, 0 0.001214. When I do this division, I only get one mole of tungsten that's going to be in my compound. And when I do this division, 0 0.004856 divided by 0 0.001214, I get four moles of Cl. And look at that. When you're at this mole ratio stage, guys, make sure that your number is as close to a whole number as possible because now we are ready to write our empirical formula. Okay, so our empirical formula. W first. I only have one of them. So, I mean, you can put a one, but technically you don't have to. But then we have CL, and there's four of them, so I just put a four there. And that is your final answer. So my empirical formula for this compound is WCL4. Whew, thank goodness. Guys, what'd you think? This one was crazy, but it basically combined a lot of things from chapter, well, this chapter, and then last chapter as well with the empirical formula. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this has helped you. Let me know in the comments. And this is the end of the chapter four uh, questions. So it's been a wild ride. This question kicked my butt, 95 questions in, but we are good. I will see you all in the next chapter. And I hope you guys are, you know, are doing well. And I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you later. I'll see you in the next lessons, all right? Take care. Bye-bye.